Welcome to The Third Space. This is a show we talk to innovators and tastemakers from all around the Bay Area. Why The Third Space? Well, outside of the home and office, the coffee shop is The Third Space. We ask our guests to take us to their favorite coffee shops where we have amazing conversation over coffee. Hi, my name is Faiza Farah and I'll be your host. Our guest today is Dage, designer of Creative Class and Mind Style Company, curator of the More Vibes Mixtapes, and he's been touring and DJing with different members of HBK. So, what do you typically order when you're at a coffee shop? Uh, usually, now I get like a chai tea or something like that, but before <laughs> I got like the bare minimum just to be in the coffee shop. Like, I just get like a medium coffee and that's it. <laughs> Some water or some shit. It's um, like your entrance ticket to yeah, use the space. Yeah, I had to pay, you know, pay for my space. So I usually get, I used to usually just get a medium coffee. So we're in Oakland, yeah. and this is your hometown. Mm -hmm. um, you were born in Berkeley. Berkeley. But that just because I, my mom's probably in the area. Okay. We lived in Oakland during the summer. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. So where'd you grow up? Which part of Oakland? I grew up in West Oakland, and like high school, I moved to East Oakland, and I went to North Oakland school, so I've oh. been running around. And, and how do you like the Bay Area? I think it's, it's dope. It's dope. It's a beautiful place. It's, there's nowhere like it. I've been traveling. Like, I've been everywhere. Within the last three months, I've probably been in every state, except for Florida. I haven't went to Florida, but I've been in every state, and there's nowhere that compares to here. Weather, mm -hmm. like the elements, you can go, you can see the snow, the beach, a mountain, and, and a lake, like, all in, like, two hours. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. I don't feel like there's nowhere any like that. No. You know? So it's a special place, and it's just so many cultures out here that just blend it. And in terms of, like, the culture for people that just don't really know what the vibe in Oakland is, you probably hear about the stuff in the news. What else is going on here? Uh, a lot, man. It's so much shit. Like, we birthed a lot of things that are going on. I mean, the news is the news, but who gives a fuck about the news? Like, we got our own thing going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? The violence and all that stuff, it goes on, but it's so much other things going on at the same time. Right. If you think it's what you see on the news, then that, that's what it is to you. But right. I know my Oakland is way different. Like, right. it's beautiful, you know? Small businesses, uh, it's like entrepreneurs, it's the culture, there's festivals here everywhere. It's like two degrees of separation with everybody. You right. Know what I'm saying? So, it's a town. It's, it's a the town. town. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Perch. It's in Oakland and used to be your go-to before yeah. you got an office space. Tell me about it. I used to work out here before I got my office space and um, I still work out here. I just go here before I go to my office. I like to be around people when I work because it like keeps me motivated. Right. I feel like there's some kind of like energy in a coffee shop. That's why I don't like working at my office too much. I'm too confined, you know? I don't yeah. see people. I've been, I've been working out of here. I used to take all my meetings in here. When it was called Grand Lake Coffee House. Wow. I started my clothing business in here, and um, the barista at the time, Sloan, she was like a advisor for my clothing brand. I used to wow. show her all my designs and stuff, and she used to tell me no, yes, and wanted me to scale up and like buy more stuff. She helped me a lot, like to push me. When I think I should buy like 100 pieces, she'll be like, no, go 200, you know? So she was like my motivation. She still helps me out oh, with, that's with my so brand. Cool. And, it, and that's the, the Mind Style Company? Creative Class. Creative Class. Yeah, but anything I do, she helps me out. What made you feel like you could make that transition from having like a nine to five job to being an entrepreneur? Uh, I just feel like I was cheating myself and cheating my job. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I, I feel like I'm, I'm better fit doing more entrepreneurial field than to sit, can be a social worker or a teacher. Right. I need to be in the arts. I need to be creating. Right. I need to be doing working for myself. It's a pay cut, you know, right at this point, at but this at the point. same time, it, I feel like it's better for my, my, my job, you know, my old job, that I don't do this, you know? Because, I mean, I love it, but I don't know, I just, there's things that you're supposed to do in the world, you know? And it comes to a point you have to go get it. Like, right. So I just think I hit that, that my mark, and I was just like, yo, this is over. I also had an opportunity to go on tour, so it was a great motivation for me because I don't think I would have ever quit because it was comfortable. Right. But the tour helped me out and like put that away. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like like a buffer period. And who did you go on tour with? I went on tour with G Easy, um, this artist named Cool John, artist named Kaylani, an artist named JN, and, and it was like a nationwide tour. It was like the month that I quit my job. Wow. I, I went on tour <laughs> and was like living in La La Land for 30 days. Wow. And then um, came back to work. And most people will just kind of stay with their comfortable mm -hmm. jobs. What 
made you think that somehow you could be okay not having your income and pursuing something else? I mean, I, I imagine that that's like a scary decision to make. I just feel like it was it was death. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. if I if I stay, it's just it's I'm not living. You know? I mean, you only have one life. You know? It's not. And you don't have to do everything professional, you know what I'm saying? You can have a job, you can have a job, and you can also have something that you do on the side. That thing doesn't have to be a career. Like, there's still such things as hobbies, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Me, personally, I have to go 100%, but it's death otherwise. If I would stay there, I'd be, I'm, I won't be living. Right. i will just be existing. There's people that are creators, and there's people that, that, that are muscle, and that, that work. I know we all have our roles, and I feel like there's better people like that. Yeah, know? the idea that's like somehow, in order to incorporate the things that make you happy, that's artistic or you know more free-flowing, it has to pay, uh, to me is like the wrong concept, you know, like, yeah. and in, in any way that you can incorporate those things, like playing guitar or like whatever it is that's bringing you a little bit more joy than you have, it doesn't have to be a career. It can just be something that you do for yourself. Yeah. If you make your hobby a job, then it becomes a job. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if It's still going to be work. Yeah, it's still going to yeah. It's still going to be work. So if you like to play the guitar, just play the guitar until it manifests into whatever it does. Right. The moment you say that you want to make this a career, you turn your your hobby into a nine to five. Take the right. love out of it and, right. and just make it like a serious thing. So I'm, right. not, I'm big on hobbies and shit. My hobby right now is paying me the most. And what's that? What are you referring to? Uh, DJing. Like I DJ and it was like a joke. Wow. But it's still a hobby. It's not, yeah. it's not anything I want to take serious like that. Like, right. I want to be done with that and move on and try something else. Uh, with the DJs that comes, I guess, your, your mixtapes. Do yeah. you want to uh, tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I made a mixtape with Krayshawn. Uh, it was like, like like a couple years ago. My homegirl had an art show and she wanted me to DJ. I'm like, dog, I don't know how to, but she liked the choice of music that I played. So I learned, <laughs> and I had a month to learn. So I learned, <laughs> I learned yeah. And then people were like, whoa, you want to do it again? Do it again? <laughs> but then, um, I don't know. I wanted to make the music to live on the internet. Like, I really don't mm. like to DJ in the club and stuff. Like, it's cool, but I just like to make, play weird stuff. Mm -hmm. and that people can like work to and create to and design to and shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can only be one place, you know? Yeah. But if they can download a mix, I can be everywhere. Right. So that's what I want to do, I'm going to focus on that. And you know? where are the uh, the mixtapes? It's on my SoundCloud. Right now I'm, in, I'm trying to get, um, I'm in a battle with SoundCloud and I'm trying to get What's my- What's going on? Man, copyright infringement is that, like I, I'll put a lot of up and coming artists on um, my mixtapes and after a while they'll, they'll get signed to labels and stuff. So after they get signed to labels, then SoundCloud will scan the sound waves, find that song on my mix, and then flag my mix. And you got four times to get flagged, and then they shut your account down. Wow. So this, this and you have all those followers and everything already I built. I started all over, though. I had, I, had, I had a lot of followers before, and then it, they shut me down for a song called Try Me by Deja Love, but I was the first one to put it on the mix. Wow. Yeah, so I started all over. I was like more careful about what I put on on, okay. on it, but I'm still getting flagged. I'm on my third flag right now, so the next one is gonna be shut down. But I plan on just hosting it myself. Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask you. I've ever thought about just hosting it yourself? And... Yeah, but you know the network, man. You can't beat the network of a community like that. But I had to. I'm gonna have as much traffic granted because of my own site. But at the end of the day, I feel like I add something to the SoundCloud. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So if if it's not respected, then I I gotta go. Yeah. You know, I'll take it. Well, yeah. hopefully, SoundCloud, wherever you are. Hello. Probably in the clouds. In the clouds, <laughs> yeah. Or San Francisco, somewhere. Yeah. But what do you think about, like, the idea of feeling connected to other people and kind of being isolated in this era of social media? Do you feel like we're more connected since we're plugged into each other or we're less connected? Shit. I think... I think I don't know. I think we might be both. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like we're, we're way more connected. Like, I know things about people who I never met, like, and I know them, and I can kind of see their personality. Mm -hmm. But there's creates a disconnect because in, in real life, you don't really have that connection or you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily feel that connection because everything on, on, on social media is by design. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? I can portray whatever I want to portray. I can right. make you feel however I want you to feel about me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I do that. There's things I won't put. There's things that I will put. You know what I mean? But it's because I want. I want to portray that. Right. When you meet somebody in person, you are what you are. Can't hide Right. That. Yeah. It's like a, a really, like, so your social media persona or profile is like this really well curated. If you do it well, it's a curated mm -hmm. thing that you want to show other people. Yeah. And so you have the time to really kind of calculate what images and things. Oh, my things. God. Have you seen this Viesco shit? Like, these people with all this neat stuff. Like, <laughs> what? What life is that? Like, that shit sucks. Like, oh, my God. It just bothers me. I, like, that's not how life looks. I know what life looks. I try to, too. I try to, like, I try to, like, create that, but it, it just doesn't work because I right. actually live life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. I know use it and I abuse like social media right. like, a lot, but I know that there once was not that, so I always like do things like to connect with people personally right. or have physical events that people can come like meet me and, right. and meet each other. You know what I'm right. saying? You don't have to be this person by design that you right. created. You, you, you know, you let your guards go and then you, you connect with people. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like sometimes uh, social media is like this really beautiful tool and and it's like a platform for for people to share mm -hmm. and at its best you feel connected mm -hmm. and then at its worst it's like so-and-so just went on vacation <laughs> so-and-so's life is like and then and then you kind of internalize like yeah. oh my god like my shit isn't as yeah. fantastic and yeah. popping as this person you know yeah. and that's just like a snapshot of one moment of their life you know but so many of us like like projects so much into that one image and there's like lots of envy and and I think at its worst it makes people feel not so cool about the shit. And, yeah, because it, yeah, it, it, it gives you a scale. You know right. what I'm saying? It gives you a scale. People compare themselves to a scale. Like before, like when a director directs a movie or a video, music video, you just see the video. You right. don't see the process. You right. just see the video. Right. And we're in this age that people just put everything out and they don't actually create anymore because they mm. put it out already before social media. They were, you only heard about it when it was done. When it dropped. You know what I'm saying? I've right. never seen Ike Williams like fucking right. in front of a camera. Like, right. I ain't seen a video. I don't even know what right. he looks like. You know? Right. But now it's, we're in a different age and people get gratification off the process and showing the process that they never even finished the product. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's oh like, my God. Yeah. You can say that again. So. <laughs> That's so interesting. People really do get a lot of gratification from that. Mm -hmm. And it might even prevent someone from actually of course. finishing. If you got the accolades already, right. if everybody's already hoisting you over their shoulder, why you do it? Why? Why finish? It's, too, it's, it's done. You already got it. You already got it. Because everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants gratification. Everybody right. wants to be hoisted over somebody's shoulder. If you get it already, why would you do it? That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about it that way. Well, um... I guess let's talk about what you do, the, the work that you're doing, the Mind Style Company. What is it? <laughs> my, um, my Style Company is uh, it's like the umbrella company to my other companies, my other business ventures. Mm. But I feel like I wanted to house it and make it clear for the consumer to digest. You feel me? Because I do so much stuff, so it's hard to right. it's hard to even like, what does that cute doggy do? Like, <laughs> I think it's this, I think it's that, but I don't And how do you say his name? What's his name again? Daddy, daddy. <laughs> I seen this girl kind of, she's like, Dej. Like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's dog ain't back. Yeah, um, it's just an umbrella company. And I, I just want to make it a blog right now. And I just want to feed like the MySell company and everything I do. Like, I don't know, we live in a social media area and I'm just trying to have control of my market. Ultimately, I want everything, I want to host everything. Right. You know, I don't want to use SoundCloud. I don't want to use Twitter. I want to have direct, direct connection with the, my viewers and people who give a fuck about me. Right. You know what I mean? Ultimately, I want to get these people off social media and put them on my platform. Right. But the platform that I, I have is called the MindStyle Company. And, oh, that's uh, beautiful. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I give so much to the universe, and it always dies with whatever platform it is. You right. know what I mean? And I want to just have control. Like MySpace. Yeah, MySpace. <laughs> You're you know like, I, mean? but I, had, I had a good thing going. Yeah, I had a good thing going, you know? So but I just want to have, I want to have control of everything. You assume that people know what you got going on. It's like, yo, I had a party last week. Like, you didn't come, what's up? You've right. been asking me about parties, but they don't know because they, right. people have different shit to do, to do. Right. Everybody's busy, they have their own world, you know? So just having that hub for people to come back and get the more vibes, the mixtapes that I put out, to see a portfolio of my, my design work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To see the mixes that I do. 
and everything. I just have it. And I don't know, it just, it's better for me to say the Mind Style Company other than Dage. Why, why is it called the Mind Style Company? It came from Creative Class, the, the Lifestyle Company. The people who follow or are or, or, or rep Creative Class at CIC, they don't do the same shit. You right. know what I mean? Like, they're into different things. Their lifestyle is different. Right. But the only thing that is the same is their, their thought process and their mind, mm -hmm. mind style. You know what I mean? And like where they want to go. I love that, by yeah. the way. Mind style. Yeah. So the only thing that's the same is where they want to go and like the trajectory. Mm -hmm. But it's, di it's in different, like, it's in different fields. So I can't sit here and downplay everybody and say, oh, it's a lifestyle. Right. They don't have, it's not the same. It's not lifestyle. the same lifestyle. Yeah. It's a state of mind. Yeah. It's beautiful. And so the Mind Style Company hosts um, Creative Class, mm -hmm. the More Vibes mixtapes, mm -hmm. and then I could have swore you had merchandise and stuff as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to continue to sell Creative Class. I mean, to do the Creative Class clothing, but we also are just going to merchandise everything. More merchandise, more vibes. Yeah. Merchandise the Mind Style Company because people. I mean, people love the name. You know what I mean? And and the more vibes, we give it out for free. And even when we do the physical parties, it's still like five dollars. You know what I mean? Right. But have a way that people. What's the point of that? Why five dollars? Because I used to be a promoter, and I used to charge like forty dollars, fifty dollars. I mean, like forty, thirty dollars to get in my my clubs, and I feel like I wasn't partying with the same people that I wanted to. Mm. And I felt like if it's cheaper, then I'll be able to create an atmosphere that I would like to be in, because I wouldn't pay forty dollars. But right. I was charging people $40. Oh, that's you know so what I mean? So coming back and partying, I said, if I'm going to do party, I'm going to do it like I want to. Right. You know? And have the right kind of people. And right, have the right kind So of you're people. also kind of curating the space as well and the kinds of people that come to your events. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's, the, that's the point. Like, you can't live in the Internet. Right. You got you to gotta bring these people together because you got to be awkward. You got to be around people. Like, what, what do you mean when you say you got to be awkward? You got to be like okay with being uncomfortable? Because I feel like everybody's them, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's an awkward person for, your, for you that's gonna match you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like, you just have to be yourself, whether or not it's, that, it's as cool as this person that you created on the internet, you just have to be in, in people's face and in contact with people and just be whoever you are. Right. And I say it's awkward just because we all feel awkward. I just wanna create that space that people can actually mingle and see each other. I've also noticed um, that you, use the word rebel around your, your brand. What does it mean to be a rebel? Yeah, I don't know. It's so it's like my it's like the actual word in my <laughs> vocabulary now. I don't even a rebel is just somebody that's just like when I say rebel I don't mean somebody throwing rocks at, at police and shit. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? I just mean I feel like it's just somebody like that's like doing what they want to do, you know what I'm saying? Despite of like what what's going on around them, you know, despite what's cool and what's not. It's like if this makes you feel good to play the harmonica then do it. I don't care if your friends are thugs. Like if that makes you like feel good, go g defy. You right. feel me? Defy what's the norm to be happy. Right. You know? And I don't know. It's just in rebel just traveling the unbeaten path, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's harder but we'll all get more out of it. It's I think there's a lot of gratification that can happen when you are um, constantly pushing the status quo, you know? Mm -hmm. When you're living a, a life that somebody else has planned out for you. There's so much unhappiness. Yeah. So much unhappiness. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care, but but to live the life to ever die Can't be the best you, because you already take it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can be better at you than me. Uh, since a lot of a lot of young folks kind of follow what you do, what bit of advice do you wish you could kind of share with people that are wanting to kind of live a more rebellious life? and a more free life? I would tell them, don't follow me. You know what right. I mean? Follow themselves. But it's not about me. Like, my past and what the things that I have, it came from, like, things that I've been through. I just know that they can be a better them. I just feel like everybody should just travel, follow their path. Like, try shit, fail. Like, fail, failing is, like, normal. Right. You know what I mean? Like, just try it. Like, you know what you don't want to do if you fail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and respect the process. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't feel like these young kids, the young, youngsters respect the process and that it's not overnight. I know we live in a we live in an era where we see Soldier Boy and it's just instant. Instant. It's like it's not like that. Like right. all these things that are happening for me right now took over fifteen years to it's develop. It's a combination, yeah. for sure. You know what I mean? Like I've been working at this my, my whole life and it and I feel like I'm still not even close to where I wanna be. Yeah. But the things that look overnight took ten years. Mm. You know? 
That's really important to, to hear. Yeah, so even like the DJ and shit, like I'm, I'm touring, but I used to dance with the, the parts, the artists that I'm, right. that I'm DJing for. Right, you had a ago. whole yeah. dancing, like, yeah. like turf dancing. Yeah. Right. I used to turf dance with John, Cool John, mm -hmm. you feel, like, like years ago. Wow. And then, you know, and it came full circle. I tried something new because of the opportunity my, my homegirl gave me to DJ. And now he was like, oh shit, well, I need, I need to DJ then to so it just work. So it looked overnight and everybody's like, oh, right. it's not, you right. know what I mean? You gotta respect the process and you gotta embrace it because it's what it is. Um, so we usually end each conversation with a show and tell. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I do this is because I love show and tell as a mm -hmm. little girl. Um, and I would always bring like really fucked up things, mm -hmm. like things you shouldn't bring the show and tell. So I think as an adult, why not? Let's bring it back and ask people to bring some of their like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a prize possession, but like anything that like you um, you use or you like having around. Mm -hmm. So what is your show and tell item? Well, this is um, this is like you now a Swiss Army knife. It's like I feel like I'm a Swiss Army knife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's yeah. like, I don't necessarily use it, but like, mm. I always have it around. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I don't know, I just feel like it represents me. This is not the one I have usually, but it's another one, but this one's in my phone. So you feel like you are multifaceted and you, you're a tool? No. <laughs> I just feel like, I just feel like it's like, it's like my mascot. I feel like mm. it's not the sharpest knife, it's not the sharpest screwdriver, but it's just the job done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's how I am. I'm not the best guy to design it, but I'm, I want to get the job done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just feel like it really is me. It's like wrong to be a jack of all trades and shit. I don't feel like that. I just feel like, why, why not do everything? Right. Why not open a beer can and, like, you know? <laughs> really? Right. Everybody is jack of all trades, master of nothing. And I just like, I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. I hate that thing. Like, uh, no. You can do whatever you want, right. whatever you want. Yeah. 50 years old, you can change careers. Like, you Absolutely. can do that. That's so know. awesome. It just, like, represents me. Yeah. I know my mom is, like, scared with me always because I was always like, into different things. She's like, hey, what lane? <laughs> right. You know, what's, what's your lane? What's Pick your one lane? thing. I mean, I'm, now I realize, like, I'm, I'm not going to limit myself to one lane. I want every life to forever ask, so what is it you do? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't, I don't need to be the but I won't, I'm not going to myself. Awesome. Yeah. I think we got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, like, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel. And also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram.